makes me nervous because he can sing and we can hear him across town. And the problem is he was raised in this congregation and they still need to work on it. So he could preach for two hours and never quit breathing. I walked up to him this afternoon after it was over and I said, you're still sweating on your big old head. And he said, it'll be a while. Over two stuff. I'm thankful to be with you again tonight. Hard fighting soldiers, there are a few of us. Brother McAfee, Brother Don is my brother in the Lord. Don, Don Mitchell, we worked together at Westside for a number of years. He's here tonight. He was also in Polo Park. We were in Athlete Christian College, not the university. I'm going to explain that to you. This is I understand. I understand. I basically wrote a letter to the group fellowship from Athlete Christian in 1993. <laughs> I'm telling you, the gospel got lost in the social gospel that is now taking over the Lord's church. Amen. So, we're not a social institution. Amen. we got a foundation that no man can lay, which is Jesus. Amen. When you mess with the foundation, the building's going to fall. That's Amen. Right. My brother back there, if you'll put our word up in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, tag it in from 9 down to, to number 11. We'll work with that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 9 through 11. Tell you, I'm off the bench tonight. I'm not the man you're supposed to get to hear. I'm just an old man substitute, but I am a soldier. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on, you man. man. You man. Fifty-five years yeah. trying to yeah. preach the yeah. gospel. Still learning every day. Yes, yeah. This grand young man that before me here makes me say, "Did I ever have that ability?" <laughs> I've been around and gone places and worked, but I'm troubled tonight about the foundation of the Lord's church. Amen. Oh, you gonna put that scripture up for me, brother? I'm gonna have to come back and help you. First <laughs> <laughs> chapter, chapter three. Man. He wants it on the back of it. He wants it on. He wants it on. He, he wants it up on the back. Thank you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. There's a grand old scripture, and it's speaking about the families, and it's in. You see, if families of the Lord are not stirred and taught and educated and directed, and if mothers and fathers don't build them, the church gets weaker and weaker, and the foundation gets weaker. First thing you know, the thing begins to fall because the sand is where they're building their children and families and not on the rock of the Lord. That's Amen. Right. That's he right. says in Psalm 127, verse 1, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain, they that build it. But if you're not building families, and you don't understand what this brother was saying about the spiritual attitude, even the conviction, even confrontation right. with those who are in sin. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I was waiting for him to get hold of John chapter 4, and the man kept throwing his tags at him. <laughs> you see, here's a, here's a girl that was up at the well in John 4. Man. And she, he said to her, Jesus was there, wanted a drink of water. They got to talking. Uh -huh. He said, why don't you call your husband? She said, well, I don't have a husband. He said, you said, right, you've had five. And, five. and. Mm -hmm. See, the thing that breaks my heart is that you can't build families on the rock of the Lord. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. 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 The tie that God gave it. Man. Two become one, and they're bound forever. Yeah. Only to be separated by death. Matthew chapter 19. I'm not talking to you about, about grandchildren. One in my family. Who's in a relationship that God can't bless because the house is not right. Man. And what's happened to him? He's running from the Lord and Grandpa been after him last Sunday, two Sundays ago. But his life is falling apart and he's become a chronic alcoholic. When he sees his papa, he won't look at me. He'll tuck his head down. Papa, can you buy me some groceries? I'm gonna buy groceries. But he needs to understand where the foundation of life is. Man. It's in this grand old old God song. Come on, it says in Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. You 
see, I'm just asking you to think about it and understand right yeah, here. Yeah. This great scripture up here helps me recognize that this foundation he's talking about, I'm going to read it to you and you're going to help me. The word of God helps me understand it here. We're talking about building tonight. First Corinthians chapter 3. For we are labors together with God. You are God's husbandry. That means his workers mm -hmm. on that committee, that contract, that man is going to build something. He said, you God's building according to the grace of God, which is given to me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation. Another built on, but let every man take heed. Be careful how he builds. Now here's the kicker right here. For no other foundation can any man lay, any man lay than that which is laid which is Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen? Yeah. Here's another sidebar. This don't cost any more than the other did. <laughs> Preach, sir. There's a congregation and a brother that's dear to me, nearby. I live in Eastland, Texas, on the interstate about halfway to Fort Worth. He joined the minister of life last year. When they had the Palm Sunday and the preachers were invited, he goes over to the, listen, the John Calvin First Baptist Church. Mm. And he speaks in that building. My heart, I, I take pills from my heart anyway because I got a feel. My a feel like to kick me out of the house. You say, Brother Montgomery, what's the problem? It's not the building, it's what we teach. And he's over there trying his best to influence folk. And he's trying to, don't you go over there where sin. We've got 1,600 denominations in a general sense in these United States of America today. All kinds of concepts. Mm -hmm. we all know. In Galatians chapter 1, the brother will say, the we, 1, 6 through 10, the we are an angel of heaven. Preach any other gospel. Other than that, what I preach to you, let him be cursed. God in Mathema. And when God repeats something, he repeats that again. As I say before, I'm going to say again, no, the we are an angel from heaven. Preach any other gospel. Angel from heaven. Preach any other gospel. Then that which I preach to you, Paul said, he could be Mathema. Man. When the trouble came in Corinth, the house of Chloe sent the word back. Paul writes to him with the power of the Holy Spirit guiding his hand. And he says, you folks need to be joined together same mind. in the same mind and the same judgment. I asked candidly to this brother, I said, do you feel like you have fellowship in Christ with the Baptist church where you went to speak? And he said, oh, I'm just there because I'm working for the Lord. Maybe I can help those people understand the gospel. I'm telling you, there comes a time when you have no more fellowship with them. Well, that you walk away from Corinthian letter makes it clear mm -hmm. we cannot mm -hmm. fellowship with those Amen. who reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That's why he built on a foundation Amen. where no man can lay a foundation except that which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, 55 years of trying to preach the word. Isaiah talks about a plumb line. I'm not going to give you all. I'm just telling you. You know what a plumb line is? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. You hang a string up, and you make a mark where that string tells you. And then you can also pull a string, build a fence, set your studs, do whatever. I've done enough carpenter to be. I please me. Nobody will pay me for it. <laughs> but I can build a house you can live in. But I'm going to tell you. It's not worth two cents and a nickel going down the road if it don't have a foundation. Don't preach up. I'm telling you right now, we've got, I poured foundations. I built them myself. After I retired, that's probably the reason I had to have my back overhauled because I did things that old man shouldn't have done by himself, but I was excited to do that. Because I love to see that thing put together. And, and, and you know, you got to put some iron in it. You know, we put that iron there now, and, 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 and we tie it. And you get your forms up, and you make sure they're square. If they're not square, your house won't look right. Man. So we measure, and we cut, and we look, and we put all that concrete, and those, those stairs.
steel rods in there, mm -hmm. and then we're ready to pour. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you this. The steel rods that God put in the foundation of the Lord's church uh -huh. are the apostles and the prophets. Yes, sir. Read that, I'll Come show on, you. Come on. He said, he, he appointed the prophets, prophets, apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ laid what kind of stone? Cornerstone. 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 Uh -huh. Come on. Now, here's the deal. If you don't get enough concrete in the corners of a frame where you're building a house, the corners don't block that. It'll crack that foundation. That's why we still like to build Peter and me. Because we jack one up, straighten it out if it's a period of meat house. If it's a slab, it's going to crack. And I'm telling you, this world has a lot of religious groups. I don't know how churches. They've got a lot of crack foundations. I mean, they're cracking and breaking. They run a social gospel. I, I, I just, I don't know what to do. I feel responsible. Maybe God and I, Brother no. Mike, could be somebody. No, we didn't no. preach hard enough. No. no. Maybe we didn't stand up and shake the book. No. Maybe we didn't call people to confrontation and conviction with the spirit of love. You did but the church is struggling. Everywhere I travel, I'm still grabbing track to somebody. Go on. Congregations that were 400 members are now two. Yeah, yeah. Congregations that were two are barely 80 now. Yeah. Yeah. Building yeah. sitting empty yeah. and struggling and can't pay the bill. Yeah. Yeah. So. Lord help us. I'm yeah. telling Amen. You. you see, he, he reminds me that we've got to understand how to build a house. Well, I've, I've worked with guys and hired some guys. They tell me, oh yeah, I know how to frame a house. They don't even know how to mark them. When you get the plate down, I don't have what's what's going to be 16 inches on studs. When you get up there, they'll frame it with well, no stiff legs up there to hold this big old two by sixes that take care of your roof. Tell me where you learned to build. He said, oh, I worked with my granddaddy one time. That's why I tell you. We got a lot of people that think they're preachers and church builders. They have never understood what my brother said, what a goal. When the word was given and Jesus Christ said, after Peter tells him, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my father went to tell him. And I say to thee that thou art Peter, Petros, and that word Petra, thou art Peter, and upon this rock that I am the son of God, I'm going to build my church. My church, brother. Possess a case. It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to preachers. It doesn't belong to elders. Come on. It doesn't belong to colleges who are now thinking that they've got a new gospel. It belonged to him. He died and paid for it. He's, He's sharing with Peter that the time's going to come and the gates of hell will not hold what I'm going to build because the foundation's going to be right. Man. It's going to be. We're talking about squaring up. We've got a square that we use. It's a 45 looking thing. When you put those studs up, you shove it up there, and if it's not right, this wall's going to be crooked. Yeah. I'm telling you, it breaks my heart. And I've got a lot of friends. I moved back to Eastland, Texas with my wife <coughs> to fight the battle that her body had inherited from two other generations with problems of Alzheimer's. And I'm shocked. I'm shocked at what it is. <coughs> we got a River Live Church. We got a Faith Assembly Church. We said a, a God be praised church. We got a mountain Come church. On, church. They're everywhere. Come on. And I'm telling you what, now people go in there. You know why they go with that church whose foundation is not strong, who do not understand the gospel? They go because they've got an eight member rock and roll country band that makes you jump up and down and up and down. I wouldn't believe this. Come on. <laughs> And when the guy gets said the Lord loves you, they give him a hand, they give him praise, and they'll rock and roll some more. Then he get up there and tell a Bible story, and the gospel never enters his heart. That's how people want that. They want to be entertained emotionally, and they want to be able to be affirmed because they feel like God is loving them, whatever they're doing. And if 
They hear somebody say, well, if you love him, you better start keeping his commandments, John 14, 15. The foundation's not right. So I want you to understand. Ephesians chapter 2, 19 through 22. I've got to get this now here. Ephesians chapter 2, 19 through 21. You remember that word when the Holy Spirit tells Paul how to write to the church in Ephesus? A great city. But worldly things were happening with this great church. And he knows it's going to be an anchor and a foundation. But he tells them without question what's going to have to happen, how it's going to be. Ephesians 2. Let me start out right there, brother, at verse 19. He said, Now therefore we are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens. With the saints and of the household of God. And the household of God. And the built upon the foundation. Built upon the foundation of the apostles. Of, of the apostles and prophets. prophets, and prophets Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ himself, himself being the chief cornerstone. And who, in whom all the building fitly framed together, brought unto a holy temple in the Lord. Now remember right here in verse 22, listen to me. In whom ye also are building together for habitation, habitation of God. Mm -hmm. Through the Spirit. God himself is going to move into this house you're going to build. Hmm. I've been around here. Been in congregations, the last one I preached full time for, in a little old town over near Waco. God used me and Sandra. In fact, we tried to work. We knocked doors twice a year all over town. We had vacation Bible school and bring 150 kids in, and we went from 90 members to 150 in five years. Had to expand the building. I was down there three weeks ago because a good sister <coughs> called me and said, I'm real sick. I got on a cause now to go lay hands and pray for people because I'm living with people that are my age and older, and we all need to help each other. We're sick. From time to time. Forty-five people present on Sunday morning. Twenty-five in Bible class. Twenty-two in the evening service. It breaks. Amen. That we somehow have found ourselves. You can blame it on the epidemic that we had. You can say, well, that's just the way it went. Most of the congregation I know of around the world, around the area, many of them have quit meeting on Sunday night. They just say, well, we take care of our obligation when we come together. You don't have an obligation. You've got a place of dedication. To come to come. You're not coming because you have to come because I, what I need to come. I need to hear the word. I need to be exhorting. Yeah. I need to be stirred, my brother yeah. said. Yeah. The understanding yeah. is that this great, wonderful book that we read from, the Bible tells me that it's a habitation for God. Amen. You remember in Genesis, and I won't get on to it, I'm just going to tell you. In chapter 11, everything was rolling around pretty good. God had already directed oh, yeah. and straightened things out. <laughs> There were some people that said, I'll tell you what we're doing. We're going to build, build a, tower. You know, a, a tower. A tower. In, in, in the language of the book, it's called Babel, which is a, a, a statement in Hebrew about confusion. And they began to build that tower, and they got it up. And you remember what happened to them. God just said, all right, I'm not going to worry about tearing the tower down. Tower down. I'm just going to confuse them so that they can't understand each other. <laughs> Now see, that's what's happened in our denominations. Lord. They don't even know how to talk to each other. <laughs> they just think we ought to say, we're all, listen to this, this is the doctrine now of our social world. We all believe in the same God. We're studying the same Bible. We're all trying to go to the same place. Let's don't struggle anymore. Let's all be God's children. We just all have a past trying to get to heaven. Oh, what in the world are you telling me? <laughs> Foundation. The Lord tore the one down at Babel. He can tear some more down. There's going to come a day. Oh, yeah. Churches are failing all around us, and they built these big buildings. Yep. But for my brother in Christ, he, he's old enough. He knows better. Go over there and preach to them. I haven't cornered him today. Did they? Did they? Did, did the play the organ? Did the choir sing? Did somebody come down and say, I'm accepting Jesus? And say, welcome into the Lord's family. We'll baptize you next month. Well, they turned me loose and set me free. Come on. <coughs> I'm telling you, 
Folks can go to our congregations down in Chapman and have a meeting. They say, I want to join this church. They say, we welcome you, sister. We're glad to have you. God bless you. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from the Salem Methodist Church. But uh -huh. well, we're just glad to have you. We know you love the Lord. We're going to try to encourage you. You just get into our fellowship. You know what they'll do when you go to the Methodist church that was established long, long ago? They're going to have you come stand up there and they're going to take a pan of water and sprinkle water across you. You call that a burial? I buried three of my dogs and I didn't sprinkle dirt. <laughs> because I guarantee you a week they'd be stinking. <laughs> I dig a big hole. I wrap that old dog up in a towel and I put him down in there. And then I put some rocks on it so the barbers can't dig him up. Come on, what do you me? Please don't tell me that we extend salvation based on the idea that you love the Lord. Now listen to me. Do you remember Jesus, Matthew seven? We talk about no other foundation. You remember him talking about builders? Yes. And building. Mm -hmm. Seven, seven, chapter seven. Right, was he finishing up that grand old gospel sermon that we call Sermon on the What? Mount. Yes, sir. Chapter seven, mm -hmm. verse 21. Yes, sir. He's finishing up. He's already exhorted them for a long time. Great, long sermon. He's covered everything. He's covered marriage, divorce, and remarriage. He's covered all kinds of sinful situations. And when he's finishing up and getting ready to put the whole thing down with an understanding, he starts and he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And then he goes on to help understand this. He said, There was a man that began to build. Remember? Rain descended, the floods came and beat on that house. Yes, sir. And it was one that was founded on a rock. And then another that heard his sayings of mine, but did it their way, said, I built it. He was called the foolish man, and he built on sand. Man. Rain just gets it. The floods came. The winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell and what? Great, Great was the fall of it. It was the fall of it. Of it. There Come on, was. preacher. <laughs> I'm not a prophet, but the son of a prophet, but I'm telling you. I hope I live long enough to see God finally come with his gospel. Oh, God. He's not going to come destroy and judge people. That's coming. Appointed Abraham wants to die, and he said, I'm going to let you do your thing, and then I'm going to come and confront this world. And we're going to say sheep and goats separated. And he's going to say to some, Well done, good and faithful servant. I make you rule over many things. You can rather a few things you might, I'm going to make you rule over many things. Enter there under the joy of thy Lord. And those are going to come and say, Look! We had all this great activity. We had big churches and big... And he's going to say, I don't know. Man. Why don't you know me? Because you don't wear my name. Because you've got a place that doesn't act like a church. Because you don't help people be born of water and spirit. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, John 3, verse 5. What's wrong with this foundation? Well, I just want you to help you understand. Because when he gets through there, he gets right down to it. He explains to him about this whole story of building the way God intended for him. He said he taught us one having authority and not as the scribes. Verse 29. Now I want to ask you something. Now I grew up in a congregation in the country, Young County, about 250 members. There were five of us because of the influence of our families, but basically because of grand old elders. Five of us began preaching within two years after we got out of school. And somebody would come, and I was a boy baptized almost 12 years old. And somebody would come and say, My heart is broken. My life caught in sin. Me and my husband had trouble. He went off and left me with another woman. I had an affair, or I stole some money, or I messed things up. And those grand old elders in the Lord's church would get out in the middle of the aisles on their knees and pray. Yeah, yeah, sure. As a young boy, it can't get overwhelming. I don't see it anymore. This place is where you can go right here. Middle, if you go down, those elders come up and lay hands on you and think they're going to give you some kind of blessing. 
That ain't what God said. Elders ought to be those who are shepherds over sheep. And if they're caught out there away from the need of the fold, you better go find them because the chief shepherd's coming, going to count these sheep. And if they're not in that fold, you in trouble. I'm telling you. And I'm going to say something to you, my brothers. I'm going to get done really get back in a minute. I preached with you as my brothers that indeed have a skin different than mine for 25 years. Man. Blessed me to go to lecture ships pretty well in a, in a lot of places. Why in the world can you not know and understand when he said he charged them to appoint elders in every city as I gave you charge? Mm -hmm. Come on. Why can't you find a way to educate, to mature, to stir, and to ask men who have been faithful to the Lord, have Just faithful families, to walk up and be shepherds instead of you trying to be the pastor. Come on. Why can't you do that? You say, Brother Gang, it's different. That's right. Well, you are not the pastor. The pastor has to refer to those who take care of the sheep. Yeah. And God said, I want men who can on, become elders, yeah. shepherds, bishops. And I'm going to tell you something. Those men need to smell like, like sheep. sheep. Uh, That's yeah. right. I don't like sheep. I have to tell you, I'm raised around the My son has a cattle education and a ranch. He won't let sheep on his property. He said, they're dumb, they're crazy, they'll tear a fence up. And I said, but son, they have four or five babies pretty quick. It takes no longer. He said, I don't want any more babies to train like they train her. <laughs> I'm just telling you, we need shepherds. Why can't you men, great preachers like you are, Full of the word of the Lord, find some way to raise up yes. with the power of the gospel yes. men who yes. truly know the word yes. that will indeed guard the flock, yes. protect the flock. That's right. That's right. So that you don't have to be the one that's trying to quote, run the church. Man. I had a debate. I had a debate. Come on. When I was out in Tonto Street years ago and they're fixed to have another shit. Boy, they wore me out. I brought it up in a class that I was teaching. And they said, Brother Montgomery, you tend to your business and the money, and we'll tend to ours. <laughs> I asked one brother, and he said, I said, can you sign a check at the church? And he said, well, yeah, what's that to you? And I said, you have no business in the treasury. Come on. You have no business in the money. I tell you, be careful. Judas got in the money, and look what happened. Man. You leave that money alone. You preach and teach and encourage and strengthen it. But you may need to understand, you don't be able to write check and cut this lectureship. If you want. The church can do it for you. But you keep your hand out of the money. That doesn't belong to him. It belongs to the Lord. I got a dollar two ninety-eight still that I'm saving. But I tell people, listen to this word for Jesus. He says in Luke 6, verse 38, give, listen, and it'll be given to you. Good measure, rest down, shake it together. You know what else? You're going to be running over. And with what measure you met, I'm going to measure you. I'm going to give to you like you're giving to me. You better be careful. I know gospel preachers, and I have for years, that believe that their life has been given to the Lord and they work for the Lord. So basically, they don't put anything into play. I married the older daughter of a gospel preacher, a sweetheart. Convicted. And when we married, she and I agreed that we would give 15% of whatever we was making at the top, not what was left over. Don't you give him leftovers. He's the God of God. He's the Lord of Lords. And we never quit. Right. And he blessed us. I made a few little investments, bought some land, contracted my own houses, fixed up rent houses. And I couldn't get ahead of it. I just couldn't get ahead of it. First Peter chapter 2 talks about the cornerstone. First Peter chapter 2. It's a great message. I want you to see it for just a minute. First Peter chapter 2. And, and, and when you look at it, it's just the first six verses of chapter 2. Newborn babes decide they're sitting there with the Lord. He may grow by the by. If so be you tasted the Lord is gracious to him coming. A living stone disallowed indeed of men, but a chosen God and precious. 
Your also is lit lively stones built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices accepted by God by Jesus Christ. Whereof also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and pre precious, and he that believed on him shall not be confounded. You know who that chief stone is. Amen. You know who the cornerstone is. Yes. You understand that that stone is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. I can tell you again, when we pour slab, which is normally six inches thick, we make sure there's more dug out in the corners, and two or three more inches is poured in the corners, and then we'll pour six inches for the rest of it. Why do we want more concrete, more concrete in the corner? Because land shifts. We got most to pour in those corners. We don't want that slab to crack. I'm telling you, there's just some things you have to understand about the devil. And some things we need to recognize along the way as I share with you. Let's wrap this thing up. Go to Matthew. We understand his great word. We talks about, I'm going to build my church. Man. 13 through 18. Peter, who you say I am? What are they saying? He said, you are the Christ the Son of the Living God. Mm -hmm. I just shared a minute ago with you here. Listen. Are you Simon Bar Jephthah? I said, I mean, you didn't get that. They didn't tell you that here on this earth. Flesh and blood didn't tell you. But the Father who is in heaven. And I say to you, Peter, upon this rock, the fact that I am the Son of God, of the Living God, who reigns eternally over heaven and earth. I'm going to build. The only church my father gave me a plan and directed us to build. Man. Mm. Yes, sir. You can drive over to Adelaide, close to me. I go over there and let the doctors charge Medicare for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to a congregation where a great, great gospel preacher by the name of Mid McKnight preached when Don and I were there. You had to get there early. There'd be 1,200 people there and about half of them were students to hear a great man from Plainview that was a farmer that turned preacher and he would turn you upside down with the world. <laughs> and got about maybe 400 down. The women lead the singing. The women lead the prayers. Now they've appointed them as elders. And the only question I really need to ask, show me a mature, educated, spiritual woman, and tell me she's the husband of one wife. <laughs> That's what the book says. She's to be the husband of one wife. She might be. Amen. They've got drama teams. They've got a full orchestra. They have a full choir. And they say, we just give them what they want. The church needs to understand how to meet the needs of people seeking God. Amen. They ain't going to find him in that house. Amen. That foundation got cracked a long time. And it breaks my heart. When Don and I were young, Carol and Preet was a great message. Baxter, or to Barrel Baxter. Barrett Baxter preached on it. Church there in Highland reached out with it, and it was all over our world. And now it's caught up down in Tennessee. And they're doing things online. They don't even have the eyelids they used to have. So what are you going to tell me? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. And we're going to go home. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. My title is to talk to you about no other foundation can man lay than that which is laid to Jesus Christ. And I hope the brother, the Lord's helping him understand I'm trying to take care of your business that he left for us to do. He was going to come. 11 and 10. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says it for He Look. is looking for a city. A city. We'll check foundation. foundation. Who's builder. Foundation. Who's builder. And maker is who? God. Go back up and look at verse 9. By faith, he, he sojourned to the land of promise. In the land of promise. As in a strange country. Well in the tabernacle. Well in the tabernacle with Isaac and Jacob. There's, there's with him. With him now watch. Same promise. Same promise. Yes, what is the promise that he gave us? Come on, preacher. Mm -hmm. He gave us a promise that said, 
I have a plan for you, yeah. and I'm going to save you, the church, and I'm going to build it on apostles and prophets, and I'm also going to remind you and tell that Jesus is going to be the head of the church and the savior of the body. Yeah. And he's the one in charge. When you establish a building, you make sure that foundation is nobody except Jesus Christ. Man. And you make sure that when you preach in that house, you understand it don't belong to you. In fact, what I want to tell you as we wrap this thing up, the car you're driving outside, the money you got in the bank trying to make it, the five hundred dollar suit you got on, and two hundred dollar shoes, which I don't have, thank you. <laughs> you got a ring that costs more than my car costs. Bro. I'm not being nasty, but I'm just telling you guys, you make me look like a country boy that can't even find a place to buy it. But I'm all right. <laughs> None of that belongs to you. Lord, Lord. Lord. That's all right. Lord, Lord. Long. When my superdog died, finished her journey, I tell people, the kids picked out a casket. They said, Dad, can we put Mama's Bible in there? Can we put this and that? And I said, no, she's going to a place with a man <laughs> who wrote that story. Yeah, Make yeah, those yeah. Promises. That's, That's right. right. It's going to give her comfort. That's right. And a brand new body. Oh, Come on, right. Right. John 3, yeah. verse 1. He yeah. said, it'll be yeah. even as I am. I don't know what that body's going to look like. Mm -hmm. But my sweetheart has got a body that's not missing up her mind and her heart and her life. She weighed 80 pounds when she died. You can't take none of it with you. What you can take is a life that understands that he is the Savior of the body, the Lord's church in your body. Amen. And if you truly understand what he says in Revelation 14, the blessed are the dead that die, die in the Lord. Who die in the Lord, yea, and his faith and the Spirit, now watch, that they may rest, rest from, from their labors, from the labors, and their works do the follow works, them. Sir, brother, help me right there. Amen. And their works are going to follow. Them. Yes, sir. Right. Now, my wife was not a preacher. Thank you, Lord. She didn't try to preach. Amen. But I never left a pulpit when I was preaching. She didn't take my hand and walk down that aisle and stand and have fellowship and love with preachers and families and folks who were with me. Four kids would sit up here. I can be preaching. And one of those kids gets cutting up and I can stop and point right in the middle of a point. And he'd say, Mama, he's on me. And I'd tell him, if I have to point you when I'm preaching, when we get home, we're going to have a discussion. It's not going to be a discussion out loud. <laughs> and they can still tell you that I put the fear of the Lord in them because we were in the Lord's house. That had been built. It was his time. And it belongs to him. You help me as gospel preachers and servants and workers. To help build his house back where it ought to be. If you're not there, you've got people that don't understand it. But when you work, you build that congregation. I had an old preacher tell me several years ago, John Bannister. I was about 28 years old, preaching for more people than I should have been. He said, young man, Saturday morning, he's a skilled man, had 1,200 men. Saturday morning, won't you come up and have breakfast with me? And I said, well, I can do that. And he said, well, you come in a white shirt and tie he said, what are you doing Sunday morning? I said, well, Saturday morning. And I said, well, John, I've got two big kids that like to play golf. I go play golf. And he said, let me tell you what I do. I go eat breakfast. I make a list on Friday. And I'll have 25 visits on Sunday. And from 7 in the morning to 7 at night, I'm knocking doors, welcoming new members, praying with people that are struggling with health problems, Come on, loving on those who are old and struggling, and they're fighting the battle of life. Oh. He said, that's the way you build a congregation. He said, you don't build it on Sunday. You may preach a good sermon. They may tell you how good it is. I'm not a great preacher. You don't build churches on Sunday. You exhort a church. You feed a church. You direct a church. You help them understand God's promises and their reason to obey him. But he said, you ain't got to go out there and hold a hand to it. And read the word to a brother that's withdrawn from the Lord. Yeah, yeah. You've got to tell that sister who's pain and she kept wondering, why is the Lord keeping me here at 90 years of age? And she said, why, why don't God let me die? And I said, God's not in the business of making people die. A lot of people believe that when sickness comes, 
that the Lord sent him. They think everything that happened, if the car wreck I happened, the Lord sent me that car. car, car. Yeah, my God is a God of good all the time. He is not one who creates evil. He is a God one that does not send temptation. So we've got to tell people, you understand the Lord himself has sent you nothing but blessings and fellowship and love and a word that will help you eternally to go to heaven. But you tell an old sister that just laying there in the bed and she's bedridden. John said, you go knock on that door, young man. You put a white shirt and towel. You say, Sister Brown, we sure have been praying for you. We miss you at church. We want you to come back if you're able. But we're going to bring you the communion next Sunday. We don't do that anymore. That, they say that, that's, that's, that's tradition. That, that's just a, a, a strange way. We don't do that anymore. I guarantee we carry communion for years to our church, to the hospital, to people. And John helped me. The congregation where John was preaching in their early 70s, where he mentored me, had 1,200 members. They just sold their building for nothing to the place in Fort Worth that's called the Hills. Rick Ashley's the preacher in the Hills. I've seen that. You can hear just about anything you want to hear. <laughs> The doctrine of unity and diversity means we're all really together. The idea is that we don't stand for anything, so we fall for anything. We believe that if we get the people to come in and give them their money, my brother talked about, they're going to be all right. Because we're going to tell them about Jesus and how he loves them. I had a brother call me the other day, an elder, and he said, Brother Gary, I'm sick and tired of hearing you and others talk about rules and laws. He said, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus freed me from the law of sin and death. He said, I don't, we don't have rules. All we have to do is learn to love the Lord and love other people, and God's going to take us home to heaven. Bless his heart. I don't do much computer work, but I sat down and wrote him a full page for scripture. He said, I don't know about you, but this old soldier is still here and say, if you love me, Keep my Keep commandments. My commandments. Uh, and he great. tells me in First Peter chapter, the, the, my commandments are not grievous. So yeah. They're not hard. You just got to go make a commitment and walk in the light as he is in the light. Yeah. Have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all sin. That cleansing is continuing action of the love of God in your life. That action, that cleansing continues. It's not something that just happens when you're washed in the blood of the Lamb and you're Come on, in the water and born of water and spirit. I was baptized in Christ at 11. I was a foolish boy down the road. My mother cornered me. I drank one time with some guys that I was good friends with. I went home and my mother came. Boy, she, she, she knew stuff before I ever got to the house. She sat out beside me. She said, let me tell you something. That stuff will ruin Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a rage, and God was deceived by their by otherwise. And she knew the book. She said, now here's the way it's going to be to start tonight. If you come home again with that kind of evil stuff in your body messing with your mind, when you get up the next morning, there'll be boxes on the front porch. And I'm telling you, you ain't living here anymore. My daddy died when I was five years old. She was widowed at 36 with four kids. We moved out at the edge of town. An old house made out of boring and old lumber. Didn't have a bathroom in it. We took a bath in a number two wash tub in the kitchen. And we finally, finally got a bathroom. But the woman loved the word and she made sure you understood. Did my mama ever whip me? Not but about four times a week. <laughs> when it got down to it, she said, I told you, and I'm going to tell you again the next time. Come on, I didn't listen. She said, you see that tree out there? You go out there and pick me in the limb. You better not pick a little one now. You bring it to me. And you're going to remember when I get through. <laughs> Does the Lord ever whip me? No. He just lets me go out there and wander around and chase the devil down, and I take a whip him. And I come back and get on my knee, and he said, You all right? You still my boy? You still my girl? Just talk to him. The Lord comes with me. But he tells me I'm wrong. 
And he knows that if you do fish in fast water, that you may be healed because the effectual, John, James 5, 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man walks in. That's much an important. I don't know what your children are. I'm trying to reach out children, grandchildren. I've got sick great grandchildren. I'm getting old. I just quit dying my hair. You know, I don't know what happened. I didn't get, I didn't get one of them grandkids. I told I told this brother that I love so much over here that was preaching thunder. I said, Thunder, you, you need to understand, get you some hair to put back up or you're too old to be smooth on top. <laughs> but he knows I love you. His sweet wife is here tonight. They are great Amen. soldiers of the Lord. I tell you what, if they were Pentecostals, they could travel and sing and people would pay them big money. If that woman can out sing him, he can sing. I'm done. Listen. Start building the church where you are. Build. I mean build. And I don't mean build another building. I mean build up the people. Get out like Don used to do. Knock doors with them. Get out involved with them and hand out tracts. I've stayed on a radio program for 25 years of my ministry. We would constantly go out and hand out cards for people to listen. Try some time writing a 15 minute sermon every day in your office and turning the radio station on and hit that microphone and preach it. It'll work you. But the Lord gave us plenty. Just build a house that belongs to Him. Except the Lord build your church family, that house of the Lord, on the right foundation. It ain't going to make it. It ain't gonna make it. If it's built on a rock, it'll stay. If it's built on sand, it'll wash away. And he says, I don't think you need to understand. Brothers and sisters, the Lord loves his lectureship. Loves those of you that have preached and shared and talked. And we give all praise and glory to him because the church and this family and this gospel still belongs to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And his father told him in the beginning was the word, and the word was just God, with God, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by, by, with, by him without him, without anything made. And you understand? And then he said, the word, now about 13, 14, the word became flesh. Amen. Welcome among us, we beheld the glory of his own begotten son, full of grace and truth. He's still there. Uh, the good Lord has exhorted. Brother Oldham has told me I'm going to extend to you the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're here struggling with a battle and the devil's led you astray or you've fallen and can't get up, you come. <laughs> Oldham and me going to get out on the knees and pray for you. We're not elders, but we're going to humble ourselves and listen to you. If you're here and you need that forgiveness and that grace, you come. And the Lord will restore you with love and understanding. Maybe you're here. You've never been to the water. He said, except you become, it makes you be born of the water and spirit. John 3, 3 to 5. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. No, you cannot. But you just come and say, I'm ready to be born. I accepted Jesus when I was young. Maybe you did. In some other building, another place, that got some other name but Jesus on it. He said, well, I got saved when I was eight years old. But they baptized me six months later. You didn't get to cleanse it. Because he said, he that believeth in his baptized shall be saved. My brother this morning. You see what they've done with it this day. He that believeth in they changed it. It's A plus B equals C. They said A plus C equals B. You believe and you're saved and then you get baptized in the church when you want to. That's not what the book says. If you've never obeyed the good news of the gospel, you want to be one of his children. You want him to wrap his arms around you. We want him to add you to his family. You come on. We'll stay on midnight. We have to have to get ready. Come on, brother. Right. Go to heaven. Yes, sir. The scene. You coming, brother, to see? They told me we had an invitation. We can't offer God's invitation without you singing, Lonnie. Oh, do not let the world.